the Advent Storybook 25 Bible Stories Showing Why Jesus Came by Laura Ritchie, illustrated by Ian Dale. Day 5. Abram and God's Promise. This is Genesis chapters 11 and 12, and 11 through 12 and 15. Galatians 3 29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. And by the way, Abraham is Abram. God gave Abram a new name. Oh, goodness. Hang on, I dropped my keys. Okay. Here we go. Noah taught his sons about God and the world. His sons had sons and grandsons of their own. One of these grandsons of grandsons was named Abram. God had a special plan for Abram. One day God told Abram to leave his home. God promised that Abram would have a family that would become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. In all, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 12 verses 2 through 3. But what is a blessing? A blessing is a gift of goodness from God, a part of his plan to bring us closer to him. God promised to bless Abram, and then through Abram, all the families on earth would have that goodness too. That was a big, important promise. Abram tried to believe God's promise. He took his wife and all his possessions and went where God told him to go. But many years passed and still he and his wife had no children. God knew Abram was afraid. So he spoke to him again. God told Abram to look up and count all the stars shining in the sky. He told Abram that his family would be as many as the number of stars in the sky. And Abram stopped feeling afraid and believed God again. Have you ever had to wait a long time for something? What do you do when you are waiting? If you are a follower of Christ, you are among those stars. There's me. Have you ever had to wait a long time for something? What do you do when you are waiting? I just asked the kid this, the kids this question. I had all five of my little ones in here in the car with me. One of them said, I hum. And another one said, I sleep. <laughs> I said, those are great. But what about if you have to wait for months or years? And I told him that this is what I have found. This is what I do. When I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for something that might take months or years, I like to remind myself that what I really want is for things to happen as they're supposed to, which means when they're supposed to. And so what I make a conscious effort to do is enjoy exactly where I am and what I have until I receive this thing that I'm looking forward to. I don't say can't wait anymore. I never say I can't wait because that's not true. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, we can wait. And with his patience, we can be patient. The fruit of the Spirit. But I also like to keep in mind that Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I shall not be in want. I don't have one in here because I already put it in the trash can. Anytime I get a um, a catalog and then a bunch of them come in the mail this time of year, they go straight in the trash because I don't want to want something that I didn't want 10 minutes ago. I think one of the most uncomfortable feelings is wanting, which is why we often get it over with quickly. So I reminded the kids that we're all very much looking forward to our final court hearing where they have our last name and this adoption is final. And I just decided months ago that for however long it takes to make that happen, I'm going to enjoy this sweet season that feels much like a gestation period 
um, it's temporary it won't last forever and it's a lovely season of anticipation so rather than wanting we can eagerly anticipate the goodness that is to come in Jesus name amen Merry Merry Christmas